you know, people always, of course, ask me and ask you and ask others for price predictions. And it's, um, it's an incredibly volatile asset. So it really is incredibly difficult to make a price direction other than just that prediction, other than to say that what I've been saying for 11 years, I can, I'll tell you the direction of Bitcoin is up, you know. Welcome to Dream Richer. Do you think Bitcoin is dead for good? Apathetic is a good word to describe the general feeling of Bitcoin traders this week, while the weekend showed average hodlers more unwelcome surprises. However, according to Cointelegraph Market Pros, Bitcoin is far off from where anyone wants it to be, even in a bear market. According to crypto experts, Bitcoin will capitulate in the next six months and hit cycle bottom from anywhere between $14,000 to $21,000. This means that the bottom is not yet in for Bitcoin, and any relief moves from Bitcoin are only distractions as it moves to lower levels. Hence, right now is the perfect opportunity to buy Bitcoin and begin to dollar cost average in as Bitcoin continues to stay on a discount. But what do millionaires have to say about this Bitcoin price? Why is it hitting such low price? Today, Max Kieser, who is oftentimes called the Bitcoin Grand Daddy, unravels this question. If you find the video helpful, then don't forget to subscribe. Let's get right into it. Uh, I think when Saylor first started buying Bitcoin, he made the comment that maybe 50 million a day in volume was actual Bitcoin. The rest was wash trading. You know, Bitcoin has had a wash trading problem for years. You know, exchanges trading for the in them own their own accounts to create stimulated volume. You see that in the Nasdaq market all the time. You know, Nasdaq is a network of dealers, right? It's not like the New York Stock Exchange where you have a specialist at this post. Uh, making a market, you have a network, and and that Nasdaq is for years guilty of wash trading amongst themselves to create the, the painting the tape and all these other techniques to create the illusion of volume and to to manufacture prices. And Bitcoin had this problem for years, and so when the sentiment changed, you'd have an eighty percent drawdown because there's just no volume. There was no volume. Now, what's different here is that over the past, let's call it the Michael Saylor era of the past several years. The volume has become legitimate and the demand is legitimate. And so the markets are legitimate. You know, people always, of course, ask me and ask you and ask others for price predictions. And it's um, it's an incredibly volatile asset. So it really is incredibly difficult to make a price direction other than just that prediction, other than to say that what I've been saying for 11 years, I can, I'll tell you the direction of Bitcoin is up. You know, if you hold it for, you know, maybe three and a half years, anyone who's held it for three and a half years or four years is in the black, right? So if you've got a time frame of, which is not a long time frame, three and a half, four years, you're going to be in the black. But I think that would be the, the main difference is that also, you know, in this environment, uh, I, when I was at the Bitcoin Miami 22, the, you know, the conference, the difference between that conference and let's say a conference from 10 years ago was the quality of the suits, right? So the people on stage are wearing, you know, $3,000 suits. Back 11 years ago, 10 years ago, people would show up in torn t-shirts and there were coders and, you know, rarely came out of their basement. As Max Kieser argues, the reason why we are seeing Bitcoin behave unlike anything before comes down to changes in the market with ripple effects of the Russia-Ukraine war still continuing on and the Feds deciding to raise interest rates. Mr. Kieser argues that Bitcoin has never seen these market conditions before. Hence, its price is also behaving in a way we have never seen it do before. In March, the Federal Reserve fired the starting gun on what was expected to be multiple increases. For the first time in four years, the U.S. Central Bank pumped up its base rate. There's a lot of uncertainty when it comes to the future of interest rates right now. It's possible that demand for Bitcoin could dwindle as rates rise. Why? Well, because old-fashioned savings accounts could once again start to offer higher returns with lower levels of risk. So the, on the macro side, this is the first time Bitcoin has faced a rising interest rate environment, uh, which causes on the macro side a huge shift in the funds. Uh, you see, for example, something like the Russian ruble is the strongest performing currency in the world in 2022 because it's commodity based. Uh, I think starting in February with 
the, the Russia-Ukraine conflict, we saw the end of a 40-year bull market in bonds and financialization and the beginning of a secular inflationary move in global markets that'll be uh, tied to commodities. You know, commodities were not a big factor for 40 years. It was financialization, interest rates, extend and pretend, just create more bonds, lower, lower, you know, the coupon rate, extend the maturity. That's the way the world worked for 40 years. And uh, now we're in a new world where suddenly the price of stuff like energy and food, it cannot be hidden anymore. It's actually hitting people's bottom line. And that's not going to change anytime soon. That's a secular shift in the inflation in the economy, in, in the globe, that's going to be with us for years, not a few months. The Fed is still thinking like the world is similar to the way it's been for 40 years. You know, starting with Greenspan, you had the so-called Greenspan put. You know, every time markets came down, Greenspan would flood the market with more cash or lower interest rate. And that, had, that went through Bernanke, Janet Yellen, Jay Powell. They, the activist Fed, this, the model has been with us for 40 years and that there's no problem that can't be solved by money printing. What happened in February 24th with Russia, Ukraine now, is that that model is dead. And the price determining factor for prices is shifted from the New York Fed or from the Fed to the East, to, to Russia, Russia, China, Iran, India, uh, Central America, South America, Brazil, those countries are going to be determining prices going forward. It's clear from Max Kieser's explanation that Bitcoin is here to stay. Despite the short term volatility we are seeing right now, the direction it's headed is up. As he argues, Every investor needs to have the four to five year time horizon in their mind if they want to profit from Bitcoin. Higher interest rates may take the shine off some crypto investments as they give savers the opportunity to secure more attractive returns in a lower risk way. However, the value of major digital assets such as Bitcoin and Ether is yet to see its biggest pump. As more adoption continues to come in from large whales, countries and companies, while interest rises will be good news for savers, but here's the bad news. Even the smallest fluctuation in rates can dramatically increase mortgage payments for homeowners on track on deals. Do you agree with Max Kiesier's opinion? To learn more about the latest crypto news, watch these videos here.